hi everyone welcome to part 2 of the two part series of videos which are going to discuss the distinguishing characteristics or the eight hallmarks of a scientific research in part 1 the link of which you can find in the description section below I discussed the first four characteristics which were purposiveness rigor testability and replicability and I was using the same example to explain each point the example being that a researcher is trying to investigate what would increase employee commitment to the organization so in that regard in part 2 I will discuss the remaining four characteristics the reason I divided it into two parts is because I don't want the videos to be too long and boring because I know my students complain that they don't like to watch long videos they want bite-sized videos and that's what I try to achieve through my video so let's get started without wasting much time on the fifth characteristic and which is accuracy all right so in research we seldom have the luxury of being able to draw definite conclusions based on the results of data analysis this is because we are unable to study the universe of items events or populations uh, we are interested in and have to base our findings on the sample we have to base it only on the sample that we have drawn a conclusion from or from the universe so the sample in question may not reflect the exact characteristics of the phenomena we are trying to study measurement errors and other problems are also bound to introduce an element of bias or inaccuracy in the findings however we would like to design our research in a manner that ensures that our findings are as close to reality that is the true state of affairs in the universe as possible so we can put faith and confidence in our findings so accuracy refers to how close the findings are based on a sample so how close it is to the reality in other words accuracy will reflect the degree of exactitude of the results based on the sample for example if I estimated the number of production days lost during the year through absenteeism between 30 to 40 while the actual number of days lost happens to be 35 the accuracy of my estimate compares more favorably if I had indicated the loss of production days uh, was somewhere between 20 and 50 right so this is called confidence interval in statistics but i don't want to go into all that in this video all right so at the end of the day the accuracy of your findings will be uh, of course highly dependent on the sample size that you use and that is what we can draw our findings or conclusion from number six is objectivity the conclusion drawn to the interpretation of the results of data analysis should be objective all right so findings should be based on the data findings should be based on the actual data and not based on the subjective or emotional values right it should be based on the data analysis so if you had a research question that asked whether greater participation in decision making would increase organizational commitment and this hypothesis was not supported by the result of your data collection it would make no sense for you as a researcher to continue to argue that increased opportunities for employee participation would still help such an argument would be based not on factual or data-based research findings but on your subjective opinion if this was the researchers conviction all along then there would be no need to do research in the first place however a lot of damage can be sustained by misleading conclusion used for decision making for example if the research question uh, relating to organization commitment that we have been using as an example was not supported considerable time and effort would be wasted in finding ways to create opportunities for employee participation decision making we would only discover later that employees still keep quitting or they are taking time off or not developing any sense of commitment to the organization similarly if research shows that increased pay is not going to increase the job satisfaction of employees then implementing a revised increased pay system will only drag down the company financially without attaining the desired objective so such futile exercises based on non-scientific interpretation and implementation of the research, research results will create more damage than if you do not do research so remember the more objective the interpretation of data 
the more scientific the research investigation becomes. Thus, researchers might start with some initial subjective values and beliefs. Their interpretation of the data should be stripped of all personal values and bias. They should be particularly sensitive that only data leads to decision making and not subjective bias or subjective or emotional values. The seventh characteristic of a research is generalizability, which refers to the applicability of research findings in one setting to other settings. Obviously, the wider is the applicability of the solutions generated by your research, the more useful your research will be considered to the users or to the research community. For instance, if your findings that participation in decision making will enhance organizational commitment is found to be true in variety of manufacturing, industrial and service organizations and not merely in the organization that you studied, then the generalizability of the findings to other settings is demonstrated. The more generalizability the research, the greater its usefulness and value. However, remember, not many research findings can be generalized to all other settings, situations or organizations. For wider generalizability, the research sampling design has to be logically developed and a number of other meticulous details in the data collection methods need to be followed. However, a more elaborate sampling design which would doubtlessly uh, increase the generalizability of the results would also increase research cost. Most applied research is confined to research within the particular area in which the problem arises and the results at best are generalizable only to other identical situations and settings. Although such limited applicability does not necessarily decrease the scientific value of the research, if the research is properly conducted, its generalizability is restricted. But remember, some research have great scientific value even if limited to its own context. They do not have to be generalizable to other contexts. And that's fine. Depends on, of course, your research area. The final characteristic of a research or a good research is parsimony. What is parsimony? Parsimony refers to the simplicity in explaining the research area, problem, research questions, phenomena, and in generating the solutions for the problems. Nobody likes complex research frameworks that consider an unmanageable number of factors. For example, identifying three specific variables in the workplace which when changed will raise the organization commitment of employees by 45% would be more valuable to the manager than identifying 10 different variables that increase organization commitment by let's say 48%. Such an unmanageable number of variables might well be totally beyond the manager's or the organization's control. Therefore, the achievement of a meaningful and parsimonious rather than an elaborate and cumbersome model for problem solution becomes a critical issue in research. Economy in research models is achieved when we can build into our research framework a lesser number of variables. All right, Lesser number of variables and this is what I try to explain to my students. They all want to go and do big research and include lots of research questions, lots of variables that is only going to make your life more complicated. It's better that you solve a small problem than fail in trying to solve a huge problem. You should gradually move towards it. Parsimony can be introduced with a good understanding of the problem and the important factors that influence it. A good conceptual theoretical model can be realized through unstructured and structured interviews with the concerned people and a thorough literature review. All right. So imagine, would, would your research be more impactful if you have certain meaningful findings or you have elaborate and cumbersome findings which are difficult for people to understand? Try to go with less number of variables that you have researched thoroughly or a complex set of variables that you could not carry out in in-depth res research for due to lack of time. So guys, I hope you found all these characteristics useful to apply in your research as well. Make sure that you understand it. The reason I used one example to explain all the points so that you could keep a consistency in understanding. Uh, let me know what you thought about this video. I hope you watched part one of the video before you watched part two because that would be better for your understanding. And uh, let me know what you thought about this video.